Hey guys, Adam Lobo here from Adam Lobo TV and in this video, I'll answer all of the questions that you have asked me in my first impressions video and I'll share with you everything that you need to know about the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G especially using this brand new Exynos 2100 chipset to its limits. So keep watching. Now since I've already unboxed the phone in my first impressions video, let's go into the specs. Now the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G, it comes with the Exynos 2100 5nm chipset here in Malaysia with the Mali G78 MP14 GPU. The variant that I have is the massive 12 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of storage, but there's also a 16 gig RAM and a 512 gig storage option as well. And it comes shipped with Android 11 with the latest One UI version 3.1, which I really loved and I'll let you guys know why later. So there's your answer, Rafik Hafiz. Now as for the colour options here in Malaysia, specifically for this Ultra variant, there are two colours for you guys to choose from, which is the extremely sexy Phantom Black and it's also available in Phantom Silver. Now looking at the phone's design and build during my usage for a week, as mentioned in my first impressions video, this is hands down the best looking rear smartphone that I've ever seen or even felt. Just by holding the phone felt really good in the hands. And the matte finish on the phone also made the phone less slippery than a typical glossy phone. Then the body also felt very solid with the Corning Gorilla Glass Victus Protection which is the highest and toughest glass from Corning. I did not have any anxiety of dropping the phone which by the way I did not but it was a really nice feeling. Now the ultrasonic in-display fingerprint sensor surely feels snappier where instead of pressing and holding on the screen longer, a simple quick tap would unlock the phone. And speaking of the screen, in my first impressions video, I did mention that it had a flat screen display but what I meant was it had a flatter screen display compared to a typical flagship because although there is a slight curve towards the sides, I honestly felt that the phone was very flat compared to a typical curved screen. And speaking of the display screen, the S21 Ultra has a massive 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display with a resolution of 1440 by 3200 pixels which is a WQHD Plus display where the total pixel count is even larger or even more than the Note 20 Ultra 5G. And for those of you who have complained of not having the option of having the high 120Hz refresh rate to the highest resolution of the WQHD Plus on the previous Samsung flagships, well, it can now. And speaking of this adaptive display, this refresh rate can go all the way down to 10Hz when the phone is not being used to ensure it gets the best battery life possible when using the phone daily which is a huge plus when it comes to the screen on time which I'll let you guys know later. And also having 1500 nits of brightness was also very useful where I intentionally waited when it was extremely sunny outside to see how visible the phone was during that time and the good news is that it was great. And also the low blue light emission also known as the eye comfort shield for the screen especially looking at the screens indoor was also an added bonus. And of course watching videos on YouTube and Netflix was amazing as usual on this dynamic AMOLED 2x display which has the same display technology as the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. Alright, now looking at the phone's camera specs, there are 4 cameras in total where the main lens is a massive second generation 108 megapixel f1.8 aperture 26mm wide lens, a 10 megapixel f4.9 with a massive 240mm periscope telephoto lens that gives you up to 10 times optical zoom, a 10 megapixel f2.4 70mm telephoto lens and a 12 megapixel f2.2 13mm ultra wide angle lens and there's also the laser autofocus over there. Now I'm going to spend a bit more time here talking about the cameras, so buckle up. 
First, looking at the dedicated 108 megapixel. Now, since there is no micro SD card expansion, so be sure to use this mode wisely. But of course, this feature still gives you the best to get a great focal length with the amount of image information that you get in this mode, making it easier to crop into any part of your taken pictures without losing any resolution. Then there's also the Pro Mode on the camera app with a 12-bit RAW photo to get even more dynamic range and flexibility in post. Then the pictures on the main lens is as flagship level as it should be to get the best dynamic range with great saturation with high level of software processing and the software also adjusts from the main lens to take a sort of macro mode when taking a close-up shot which was nice rather than typically putting a macro camera like most other phone manufacturers do. And I've also noticed that the term live focus that Samsung used to call is now called portrait mode like other smartphone cameras, which either way is totally fine by me. And I had to take the portrait mode shots for the rear camera like this. <laughs> Since the current MCO situation with me not having anyone to help me take these photos, but as you guys can see, the images look great with proper subject to background blur. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, that this 13mm focal length is still the perfect number to get the best ultra wide shots. And Samsung has always maintained to get the best results without any barrel distortions at the sides. Now let's look at the camera's zooming capabilities. First, starting from the optical zoom, there are two lenses which plays that role specifically for the periscope lens that gives you up to 10 times optical zoom and the 70mm telephoto lens gives you up to 3 times optical zoom. Now again, I applaud Samsung for putting in a telephoto lens instead of simply putting in a dedicated macro lens as mentioned earlier as this is far more useful to get the highest quality images without going further from where you're standing and if you want to go further you can always switch to the 10 times zoom where again it is zoomed in through the dedicated 240 mm focal length for the periscope lens and this time around i even felt that the 30 times zoom although not fully optical to be extremely usable and with the brand new zoom lock feature makes it possible to go up to its 100 times zoom capabilities taking a way better decent shot than the previous s20 ultra without having any issues about the cameras being extremely shaky when zooming into that and when it comes to taking photos under low light samsung's bright night mode made the overall images again look the best with such amazing details on the highlights without overcompensating on the images to make it noisier on the shadows. And you can also zoom up to 10 times using this night mode again. And you can also use the selfie cameras to take a selfie night mode shots as well. And speaking of selfies, the front camera has a massive 40 megapixel with a f2.2 aperture lens. And with that high 40 megapixel sensor, you can take high quality selfies and zoom in and crop in without losing any details. As for the regular selfie shots, the overall color produced, especially on the skin tones, were amazing as expected, as you guys can see. And the portrait selfie was again super high in detail, not only being amazing when it comes to the overall subject to background blur, but also superior dynamic range for the background area. So there is your picture quality, Amiro Arif. Now as for the phone's video taking capabilities, like their recent flagships, it records up to a massive 8K 7680 by 4320 pixels at 24 frames per second, where the video footage looks super nice and crispy. So remember how at the start of this video, I was talking about taking the new Exynos chipset to its limits? While I had no issues with the chipset using the phone as my daily driver and taking photos, videos and media consumption, I decided to take the phone to its extreme by shooting 8K non-stop for about 15 minutes under a bright sunlight about 12pm or so. And only then I had the heat up warning. So yes, only then. And having said that, there is an 8K dedicated cameras like the Canon R5 which cost 16,000 ringgit that also heats up when recording at that resolution. So for all you Snapdragon lovers out there, listen up. I had no issues with the brand new Exynos chipset, so that's that. Then on the 4K video mode, the quality of the video and the image stabilization was great where you have the versatility of using the wide lens and all the other lenses including the periscope zoom lenses and this time around you can record up to 60 frames per second for all of the lenses there's the super steady mode which also gives you the extreme stabilized shots at 1080p as well 
Now there's also the new introduction of the director's view where you can take your video of yourself and at the same time view other lenses on the phone to easily switch to the camera lenses accordingly. And the single take mode has been updated to get a more interesting randomized filter, effects and shots on a single take. Then looking at the front, it records up to 4K 2160 up to 60 frames per second also with amazing image stabilization. Now as I mentioned before in my other reviews, I've always loved the portrait video to give a really cool background blur where the software magic continues with Samsung doing their best subject to background blur footage. Now as for the phone's sound quality, as we all know that Samsung has been adapting the Dolby audio system on their speakers for their smartphones for quite a long time. And so it was with this S21 Ultra 5G on the stereo speakers where it felt there was a significant difference in the audio frequencies to give a pleasing sound especially on the bass without any distortion even at its highest volume with great output volume in all and here is a quick sound test. So there's your sound test, Daphne Isabel Lee. In terms of software, it comes shipped with Android 11 with One UI version 3.1 and this new One UI version has made me love the UI even more compared to the Oxygen OS as while the Oxygen OS was good at the time of its release, nothing much has been updated since. And since I've personally seen the growth and I'm sure you have also seen the growth of the brand new One UI on Samsung devices, I have to say that I really love their latest tweaks where if you swipe from the home screen, by default it goes to the Google feed. So no need to get another launcher to do so. The new fonts also look nicer and more minimal looking and the highlighted home screens and the quick panel also looks very clean too. And I also love the new notification icons where it look great. And the overall multitasking options with the apps is also great as well. And also worth mentioning is the fact that the new Wi-Fi 6E was significantly fast where I did see a huge difference both for the download and the upload speeds as well. So yes, with that, overall there weren't any issues when using the new Exynos chipset when using the phone daily for about a week. So there's your answer, everyone. Now let's talk about the S Pen. Yep. As you may or may not know that the new S21 Ultra is the very first device outside of the Note series which supports the S Pen. Now this means you can either use the S Pen from your previous Note devices to use it as a stylus for easier navigation and note taking. However, if you want to get those advanced S Pen gestures, Samsung has introduced a more rubberized S Pen with a better grip and more thickness to the pen as well, which I haven't gotten my hands on it yet. So I'm really looking forward to testing that out as well. Now onto the phone's battery, the phone comes with 5000mAh of battery and I use the phone daily with the highest WQHD Plus resolution with the motion smoothness and adaptive up to 120Hz where I got an average of 3 hours plus of screen on time with the adaptive brightness turned on with extremely heavy usage of recording 8K videos, shooting my Instagram stories videos, taking photos and even watching videos and I got close to 4 hours plus of screen on time with regular usage with that high resolution and with that adaptive 120 hertz which was a great battery life so you will surely get more screen on time if you change the motion smoothness to standard at 60 hertz refresh rate or even reducing to fhd plus at that high refresh rate but i would like to use the phone to its best resolution and the refresh rate so i don't mind the slightly lower battery life as the phone has fast charging up to 25 watts 15 watts fast wireless charging and 4.5 watts reverse wireless charging. So there's your answer, Stefan Chung. Now in terms of gaming, playing PUBG Mobile and Asphalt 9 was great. Now on PUBG Mobile, the game ran smoothly at graphics set to HDR and frame rate set to Ultra with only just a very minor warmth to the phone, even hours of gameplay. So there's your gaming test, Stefan Chung once again. So in conclusion, all I have to say is this. Usually as a tech reviewer, I would recommend people to stick to only making a smartphone change for about two generations. But this time around, 
With the overall amazing design, the look of the phone, a superb screen, great battery life and a very good processor if you are thinking to upgrade from the S20 to this, I would say just go for it. And of course, if you're coming from a previous generation smartphone or even planning to change to a Samsung device, with a new One UI version 3.1, you'll surely find the device to be extremely useful and appealing as well. So there is all of your answers, William Y. Now looking at the phone's price here in Malaysia, the S21 Ultra 5G is going for 5,299 ringgit for the 12 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of storage and the 16 gigs of RAM with 512 gigs of storage is priced at 5,999 ringgit which I'll leave links down below for you guys to make a purchase. Alright guys, with this do let me know what you guys think of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G down at the comment section below. Will you guys get it? Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a nice big thumbs up. Like, share and subscribe to Adam Lobo TV if you haven't done so. Don't forget to hit the bell icon just next to it to get notified for my future videos. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Adam Lobo and I'll catch you guys in my next video. On this dynamic omelette... On this dynamic omelette... Omelette... On this dynamic omelet, <laughs> on this dynamic amulet, on this dynamic omelet, omelet, <laughs> what's wrong with me? On this dynamic amulet, <clears throat> on this dynamic amulet, on this dynamic omelet, you must be laughing at me now, la. On this dynamic AMOLED 2 times display, which has the same display technology as the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2.